Good morning. Good morning. That's not bad. Okay. Good morning, and welcome to the worship services here at the Woodstock Church of Christ. If you are visiting, we are certainly glad that you're here. We would ask that uh, before you leave today, out in the foyer, if you'd pick up an attendance card, fill that out so that we can have a record of your attendance. And uh, again, thank you for being here. If you have a phone, please take that out at this time and turn it off or mute it, depending on whether you're using it for your Bible, so that you're not the person everybody turns around and says, wow, that's your ringtone. Happy Mother's Day. And if you're a mother, thank you for being that. I am certainly glad that I had a mother. I wouldn't be here if I didn't. If you are a mother and you have not picked up a flower, a rose, please do so. There's a container out in the foyer. Please pick one up before you leave today. Um, and again, thank you. There's a special collection today for the Rain Tree Village 34th Annual Mother's Day collection. You can find details in the announcement that was sent out Friday or if you would like to make a contribution, please give that to one of the elders. Our 2021 high school and college graduation recognition will be Sunday, June 6th. Graduates, please submit a picture to the office by May 26th. Please include name of the school or college. If you're graduating college, please include your degree. We are also in the process of designing a new directory we will be making our own photos for this. More details for signing up uh, to have your picture taken uh, will be available very soon. So this is a precursor for that. Please be on the lookout for additional information that'll be coming. If you're in need of an attended nursery, we have one of those. It's not uh, attended, my bad. Uh, but if we do have a nursery. If you'll exit out of the back of the auditorium, turn down to your left down by the elevators, you'll find it there on your right. We are reading through the Bible in a year. If you haven't picked up your May green card, it's out in the foyer. Please do so before you leave today. Again, thank you for being here, and thank you if you're a mother. We're very glad that you're here. And we're going to begin our worship services in song. If you would, please stand in preparation for that. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Let's sing He Paid a Debt as we begin our worship service this morning. everyone would you pray with me please <clears throat> our dearest and most gracious Heavenly Father 
we come to thee being very grateful and thankful that we have this day of worship. Father, we thank you for planning out the way things should go, for planning our existence, for giving us life. Father, we thank you for your word that guides us so that we can know the things we should choose to do and the things we should avoid. Father, thank you for the congregation here at Woodstock. We pray that we would worship you in spirit and in truth. Please be with all those that endeavor to lead, that they do so in a, in a good manner, strictly according to your word. And please be with each one of us, Father, as we follow and, and listen to the worship that we will participate with our minds and our hearts so that we could get the most out of this opportunity for the time of worship is very fleeting and, and it goes by quickly. Please be with all those who are, are sick. Please be with those especially with cancer, David Patterson and Brenda Queen, Jennifer Davidson, Scott Hayner. There's so many in our list, Father. Those with breast cancer and lung cancer and throat cancer and brain cancer and leukemias and all these many other ailments, Father. And we pray that your will be done, of course, but that you would be with them in their battles as they strive to serve you with whatever opportunity they have, and please be with the doctors and nurses and technicians and all those others that care for them. Father, we would like to thank you also for this, this day that it is Mother's Day, and we are thankful that you created the whole concept of motherhood that could nurture children and, and help set them on a right path and to be a result of a a marriage founded on godly principles. Father, we pray that we we each would take time today the best we can to show respect for and appreciation for and thanks for all the mothers and grandmothers in our lives. Father, please be with now us now as we worship you. Help us do a great job and be with all those that, that lead. Thank you for all things, your word and your spirit, but especially, Father, our Savior, your Son, Jesus Christ. I say this prayer in his precious name. Amen. Before the Lord's Supper, we'll sing Nailed to the Cross. There was one.
if you did not have the opportunity to pick up a uh, little communion cup out in the foyer, if you raise your hand at this time, one of the ushers would be glad to bring one by to you so you may be served. As we gather around the Lord's table, whether this is your first time as a Christian taking it or your thousandth time as a Christian taking the Lord's Supper, then uh, it means it means a lot to us. If, if you've been taking the Lord's Supper for 50 years, it's just as fresh, or should be just as fresh in your mind as if you're a new Christian taking it for the first time. It's an opportunity for us to turn our thoughts back to the cross, to the sacrifice that Jesus made for us, for each and every one of us, for you, for me. You know, I often think if I'd been the only Christian in the world, Christ still would have came and would have died for me. And the same for you. And to me, that's an amazing fact of how much God loved us, how much God loves me, how much God loves you. I'd like to read to you this morning from uh, 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, starting with the 23rd verse. For I received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take eat, this is my body, which is broken for you, this do, and remembrance of me. So this we do in remembrance of Jesus Christ. Would you bow with me, please? Our Lord and our God, we partake of this bread, which represents the body of our Lord and Savior. We pray that we will do that in this manner well pleasing in your sight. Thanks so much for your love. Thanks so much for Jesus and the sacrifice he made for us. For it is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Continuing the 25th verse, after the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often you drink of it in remembrance of me. Would you pray with me, please? Our Lord and God, as we as Christians get ready to partake of this fruit of the vine that represents the blood of Jesus that was shed on that cross, we pray that we'll do this in a manner as well pleasing your sight. Thank you again for your love. Thank you so much for your son. For it's in Jesus Christ's name that we pray. Amen. That concludes our observance of the Lord's Supper this morning. At this time, we have found a convenient time to fulfill another commandment in worship to lay by stores we've been prospering. There is a uh, two boxes out in the foyer. If you can get that way, you can do it online. And uh, we always pray that these funds be used to further God's kingdom. I'd like to read to you today from 2 Corinthians, uh, the ninth chapter, starting with verse 6. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And when he soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as his purpose in his heart so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. Would you pray with me, please? All Lord and God, we live in such a blessed country that we so often take for granted. Lord, we know that all these blessings come from you. Our jobs, the food we have to eat, our cars, the money we have in the bank, our health, all the blessings that we have, Lord, we pray we never take these for granted. Lord, we pray at this time as we return a portion of that that we have earned that we will be able to do that uh, in a, with a happy heart. And Lord, we pray that all these funds will be used to further thy kingdom here on this earth. We look forward to the day, Lord, that will be with you in paradise. We thank you so much, love, Lord. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Before our scripture reading, let's stand and sing, God Give Us Christian Homes. And if you would, let's remain standing for the scripture reading this morning. God give us Christian homes, homes where the Bible is love and taught, homes where the masters will and sought, homes round with beauty that
Our scripture reading this morning comes from Luke chapter 1, verses 26 to 42, and I will be reading from the New King James Version. Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin, betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and considered what manner of greeting this was. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb, and bring forth a son, and, shall, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great, and will be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. Then Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I do not know a man? And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also, that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Now indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is now the sixth month for her from, for who was called barren. For with God nothing will be impossible. Then Mary said, Behold the maid servant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. That Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste, to a city of Judah, and entered the house of Zach Zacharias and greeted Elizabeth. And it happened when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, that the babe leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Then she spoke out with a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. You may be seated. God give us Christian homes. It should come as uh, no little surprise that the home is based upon the church. We talk about our church home. Well, as Jesus is the uh, husband and the church is his bride, no wonder that that uh, prefigures our marriages and our Christian homes. And we're grateful if you're visiting with us that you have decided to visit our Christian home. God give us this, and uh, we're thankful for all of the components of that home, and especially today our mothers. We are grateful to you and for you, and we want to give honor to whom honor is due. Not that that honor uh, goes beyond the honor that we give Christ, but God has chosen the way of the home to perpetuate the human race and to give him the most glory. I want to ask you a question as we begin uh, this morning. What do you suppose is the most famous name among women in the last 100 years by far? If your name is Mary or Marie or Maria, any derivative, you have the most common name by far among females in the last 100 years. Mary, the mother of Jesus, receives a lot of accolades in Scripture. And because some of those accolades have been uh, extended beyond biblical uh, parameters, should not detract from the fact of what the Bible does say about the mother of our Lord. In Luke chapter 1 and verse 28, the Bible says, And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one, the Lord is with you. Happy are you among women. And when we look at just this one verse, we have three characteristics of Mary. Number one, she is highly favored. The fact that she is highly favored ought to indicate to us that she is exemplary. When it's all said and done, what do we want the Lord to say to us? Well done. And in so doing, he 
tells us that we are highly favored. Not because we have earned that position and we learn from Mary that, and, and here is where a part of what is taught about her goes beyond biblical parameters. The fact that she was somehow special in the womb, more so than all others, and there was some physical thing about her that made her greater than all other children that have ever been born is a false idea. But even so, this woman was highly favored of God, something that we should all desire. But not only that, in the second place, the Lord is with you. Is there a more comforting idea in our lives? No matter what we face in this life, we want the assurance. We sing about it. We teach about it. The Lord is with us. The Lord will not leave us. He will never leave us or forsake us. Well, with Mary, the Lord was with her in a very interesting way as well. But thirdly, the Bible says, happy are you among women. More happy. Of all women, you should be the happiest. And I wonder why that is. And I think we know. In Luke chapter 1 and verse 48, look what else is said about this woman, this mother. For he has regarded the lowly state of his maidservant. For behold, here it is, henceforth all generations will call me blessed. You know, when I was, uh, when I was sitting in class this morning and Walter was, was teaching, I, I just thought even, even the, uh, the science, the scientists that uh, believe in scientism as we're, as we're defining that. You know, their, their dating methods are, uh, are suspect, of course, but it's interesting the dates that they use, Walter. The dates that they use still start with B.C., A.D., before Christ. And most of them don't even believe he is the Son of God. But our dating methods begin with him, the seasons, the times of the year. And now, in the last hundred years, I wonder why Mary is the most famous of all female names even among people that don't even believe in God. But do you see what the prophecy is? From now on, from the time that Luke penned these words, henceforth, all generations will call Mary happy and recognize where that happiness lies in the child that she is about to bear. But even though these great things are said about Mary we do understand that there are some ideas about Mary being uh, perpetrated in the religious world that just aren't so. When we think of how many of us have heard of the Immaculate Conception of Mary? Well, there was a different moment, so it is said, from the moment that she was conceived in the, in the womb. According to Catholicism, the idea is that while we all inherit the sin of Adam, which is false, Mary did not because of her special nature. They claimed that Mary was saved from original sin. Now, she, the interesting idea is she still needed the redemption that her son would provide, but why would she? Why would she? The Immaculate Conception. You know what the truth of the matter is? We all have an Immaculate Conception because we are not born with sin. But this, this idea seemingly uh, is not recognized religious-wide. But not only is the Immaculate Conception of Mary an extra-biblical idea, but also is the perpetual virginity of Mary. The idea that, yes, Jesus was born of a virgin, 
But she did not remain a virgin as they would propose. In fact, we read of the brothers of Jesus Christ in Scripture. And uh, there is a great length to which some go to show that those brothers were really cousins, but they weren't. They were brothers, actual brothers. So the perpetual virginity of Mary is an extra-biblical idea. The sinlessness of Mary. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And that's, that includes Mary as well. Mary had sin. But according to uh, teachings in our religious world, Mary not only was a perpetual virgin, but she was a perpetual person who did not sin. Which, of course, is against the Word of God. The assumption of Mary. Oh, there's a lot of assumption with the assumption of Mary. This idea teaches that Mary somehow was taken up into heaven and she did not die. Now, there were some people in the Bible like that. Elijah being one of them. As Elisha witnesses him going up into heaven. But there is no evidence, no idea at all that this happened to Mary. But she was taken up body and soul into heaven. But not only is that taught, but the idea of the co-redemptrix nature of Mary. This is blasphemous. <laughs> only Jesus died for our redemption. But it is assumed, there are many assumptions of Mary here, it is assumed that since Mary was at the foot of the cross that she suffered with him and somehow took upon the role of redemption as well. The Holy Rosary. Have you heard of the Rosary? Have you heard of Hail Mary? Now, many football fans know exactly the definition of a Hail Mary. Especially when your team does it. You know, at the end of the game, when it seems like the game is lost, there's one final pass, and they throw it up into the end zone and hope that their team catches it. And we call that a Hail Mary. Well, from religious circles, the Hail Mary is part of the rosary. You, you remember the rosary beads. And those things are amazing in and of themselves. When you look at the rosary beads, there are three different sections of the rosary. And most of them deal with prayers for help to the different saints, which of course is extra biblical, but also to Mary. And there is a crucifix. There are 59 beads on the uh, rosary. There's a, a, a uh, depiction of the crucifix. And, um, and these all have representations of a certain facet of the times of the Bible. And on different days, you pray for different things. Well, a Hail Mary is one of those prayers. And the Hail Mary goes something like this. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women... And blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Mary was the physical mother of Jesus Christ. Many good things that the scripture says about Mary is true. And this is recited by religious people, but these extra-biblical ideas should be discarded. And Mary, though she should be honored, she should never be worshipped. She is not a co-redeemer. She is not in any way in a mediatorial role because 1 Timothy 2.5 says there is one God and one mediator between God and men. Now this is interesting. The man not the woman Mary, but the man Christ Jesus. Well, what does the Bible then actually say about this exemplary woman who should be modeled by all, and particularly 
mothers. I want to look at four main points here. And I want us to look at these main points as they're initially applied to Mary, but apply them to all of us today, and especially our mothers. In John chapter 5, remember when Jesus performed the first recorded miracle of turning the water to wine? His mother, this is Mary, said to the servants, whatever he says to you, do it. You know one reason why Mary is blessed among women is because she had this attitude. Do you know why you and I will be blessed today? Because we are of that attitude. And that's what we try to do in the family of God. We have biblical speechment for that which we think and that which we do. Not just in worship but in everyday life. Whatever Jesus says to you, do it. Don't try to figure out another way. Don't figure out if there's a better way or not. Whatever he says, do it. In Luke chapter 6, in verse 46, wasn't it the Lord says, but why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Mary knew what her son was all about. The Bible is going to say that she hid these things in her heart. We'll look at that in just a moment. But Jesus said to people, if you believe I'm the Lord, just don't honor me with your lips. It takes a consistent life with that. And Mary was blessed among women. All generations honor her from the time of inspirations writing about it because she lived with the idea, whatever the Lord says, do it. How important that is. In John chapter 14 and verse 15, Jesus said, If you love me, keep my commandments. In Revelation chapter 22 and verse 14, Blessed are those who do his commandments. Be a commandment keeper. That's precious. And it will be highly blessed in the mind of God. Why? That they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates into the city. That's the city of heaven of heaven. Whatever Jesus says, do it. But in the second place, notice what Mary said in Luke chapter 1 and verse 38. She said, Behold the maid servant of the Lord. Let it be according to your word. And the angel departed from her. The angel told her that she was going to have a son and his son would be the only redeemer, not along with you, Mary. But you would bear the redeemer of the sins of the whole world. And you know what that humble servant, that humble woman, that humble mother, which by the way, a woman, a mother of a meek and quiet spirit is in the mind of God a great, great price. This is why she's blessed among women. All right, Lord, let it be to me. Not the way that I think, not the way that I want, not the way that's going to make me the happiest on earth. Because as we see her at the cross, that was not a happy mother, but a loving mother. And a mother that had the attitude that said, Lord, let your will be done. And don't we see that in the sun when he was in the garden before he prayed? when he wanted that awful cup to be taken from him. He said, Father, let's do this another way, but nevertheless, not according to what I will, but what? Let it be to me according to your word. That's how Christians think. That's how Christians act. That's how worship is given to God. The main, the main premise of worship is to glorify God. God Allow us to worship you according to your word. Let us think and live according to your word. And if you do that, you will be blessed among all people like Mary was blessed among all women. In Matthew chapter 6 and verse 10, do you remember in the model prayer? What Jesus said, 
your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Let it be to me according to your word. In Matthew chapter 26 and verse 39. My father, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. But what is your will? In Philippians chapter 2 and verse 13. Here's how Paul taught this lesson to the church at Philippi. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do not for our good pleasure, but for his good pleasure. In Hebrews chapter 10, beginning at verse 5. Therefore, when he came into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you have prepared for me. In other words, this text is talking about the doing away of the Old Testament. The Lord did not desire for that old law to be a continuous law, so he made for the Son of God a body to come to this earth and to be the perfect Lamb of God. I guess you could say in a very real way, Mary had a little lamb. Really, with all reverence. She had a little lamb that grew in favor with God and man. And that lamb was to be the sacrifice that God chose once and for all. And with that sacrifice, he took out that old covenant and he established the new. A body you have prepared for me. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, you had no the idea here is continual pleasure in them so uh, then I said behold I have come in the volume of the book it is written of me Jesus was born Jesus lived and Jesus died with the same attitude of his mother and no doubt just like the mother of Paul the mother of Jesus was instrumental in the formation of that as he grew not as the Son of God, but as he grew physically as a man. Previously saying, sacrifice and offering, burnt offerings, and offerings for sin, you did not desire nor had pleasure in them, which are offered according to the law, to the Old Testament. Then he said, behold, I've come to do your will, O God. God, what is your will? To take away the old law. To nail it to the cross and to establish a much better covenant based upon better promises and better blessings. He takes away the first that he might establish the second. By that we will have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. Notice something in these scriptures. Mary is not mentioned alongside of Christ what the work of Christ was. And as great and as honorable and as exemplary as Mary was. She does not even begin to measure to her blessed son and our Savior Jesus Christ. In 1 John chapter 2 and verse 17, the world is passing away and the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. In the next place, what is interestingly said about Mary and can be said about us today is the fact when she said, my soul magnifies the Lord. My soul magnifies the Lord. This word magnify is correlated to the idea of worship. That's what we do in worship. We praise and we magnify, you know, it's, it's like a magnifying glass. The idea of all of our worship should be to magnify, to make the vision clearer and bigger of Jesus Christ. That's what John the Baptist said, right? As John the Baptist was going along in his ministry and he saw the Christ, he said, I must decrease while Jesus must increase. Mary did not seek for herself worship. Mary did not in any shape, fashion, or form try to put herself 
on an equality with their son. But there are those in our world that try to do that. Her soul was magnifying the Lord. She was, in verse 47, her spirit. What's our equivalent of the word spirit? She was doing this in her mind. And my mind has rejoiced in God my Savior. So there is a very interesting characteristic of worship, right? One of the main characteristics of it is that we rejoice. Rarely does a service go by in one of the songs that there is not the idea of rejoicing. Rarely goes by in the, uh, I I during the lesson or the, the remarks remade, uh, made before the Lord's table of this idea of rejoicing. And it's important that whatever we find ourselves in, whatever state we find ourselves, God says rejoice. And that's why she was blessed among women. She could take some of the ordinary circumstances of life, or perhaps even the more negative ones as humans would define, and she would rejoice. But not only that, look beginning at verse 48. He has regarded... Does this sound like somebody that wants to be worshipped? He's regarded the lowly state of his maidservant. For behold, henceforth all generations will call me happy, blessed. For he is mighty who has done great things for me and holy is his name. And isn't that a characteristic of our magnification of God in worship? It's humbling oneself. It's realizing that we are not worthy and Christ is worthy because of his blessings and because of his power. He is mighty, the one who has done great things. Great things he has done, we sing, and holy. How many songs, how many lessons deal with his holiness? Do you want to be blessed among people? Then follow Mary as that example. This is how she thought. This is how she lived. But not only that. Back in uh, verse 50. What is another facet of our magnification of Almighty God? His mercy. Realizing the need for it. His mercy is on those who revere, honor, fear him from generation to to generation and the Bible certainly tells us how that is how that is done but in verses 53 and 54 look at this he has filled the hungry with good things we prayed to God today and we thanked him for blessings you know the degradation of the first century world happened because of one reason or the main reason they ceased to be thankful they realized and they, they, they forgot from whom all blessings come. Mary didn't forget that all of her life. She held these things in her heart. And that's what a faithful Christian will do. But notice in verse 54. He has helped his servant Israel. Mary lived under the old law. God's chosen people under the law were the Israelites, were the Jews. She recognized his blessings not only of her individually, but of all of God's people. Do you do that today? No wonder we're commanded to love the brotherhood and to love each other and to promote it. Well, Mary promoted the well-being of God's people in remembrance of his mercy. But not only that. Notice how long that is to occur in verse 55. As he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham, and to Abraham's seed. Who's that? That's you and me, the church. To his seed forever. No wonder this woman is blessed. Because her life was consistent with what she believed. And in the last place, what she held and what she kept in her heart. The psalmist said in the 138th Psalm, beginning at verse 1, I will praise you with my whole heart. Not half-hearted ideas here. Before the gods, before the world, before the principles and the principalities of this world, 
The psalmist said, I will sing praises to you. Sounds like Mary, doesn't it? I will worship toward your holy temple. There's where the presence of God is. The church the whole, today. The holy temple of old. And I will praise your name for your loving kindness and your truth. Truth matters, brethren. It always has and it always will. These things go together. For you have magnified your word above all your name. You cannot separate God's word from God himself. As you love God, you love his word. As you honor and magnify God, you obey his word. In the day when I cried out, you answered me and made me bold with strength in my soul. Do you want to be strong like Mary was strong? Like David was strong? It's interesting, the common theme of how that happened to all. In the, in the 29th Psalm, and verse number 2, Give unto the Lord the glory due to his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. We're separating God from the rest of us. But notice that Mary is also separated. In Philippians chapter 2, beginning at verse 10, we quote it often, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow, of those in heaven, and of those on earth, and of those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Yes, Mary kept all these things, and pondered them in our heart. Won't our salvation depend on this very thing as well? It's the degree that we keep these things in our heart and live them out in our lives. She kept them in her heart. We are to hide the word of God in our heart that we might not sin against him. That we might not go beyond the boundaries of his word. The first psalm, we all know it, says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the paths of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, he meditates upon it once a week when he comes to church. No, the psalmist didn't have that idea. Mary didn't have that idea. It was a daily thing. Mothers, you want to be blessed among women? You want to be finally blessed with your children? Then teach them the word of the God every day. And you will be blessed. Well, Mary was a godly woman. And we would do well to heed her actions and her advice. Since she was successful as a mother. You know, some might witness the crucifixion and see Mary sitting at the foot of the cross and say, well, you know, she probably didn't do it right. But you know, she didn't have to say goodbye to her son with regrets. She didn't have to say goodbye to a family member with regrets because she hid the word of God, kept it. Luke chapter 2 and verse 19 in her heart. So the question comes to us today. What will your response to be, to, will be to the Lord today? Will it be Mary's responses? Whatever he says, are you doing it? Do you live day to day with the idea, Lord, let it be to me according to your will? Whether it's advantageous for me physically or not. Can you say with Mary, my soul magnifies and worships you as the only meter, mediator, as the only redeemer, as the judge of all the earth? And will you, like Mary, keep the word of God in your heart? Because that makes all the difference in the world. And you know what that word of God says to be saved? To believe that Jesus Christ is the only mediator between God and man. He is the only one that can take away sins. And he will do it. Based upon a heart that says, Lord, I'm doing it your way. And the Lord says this. In order to become a Christian, we need to hear the word of God. Believe that he is the son of God, born of the Virgin Mary. And that he wills that all men be saved, no matter what we've done, no matter who we are or where we've been. 
And if we'd be willing to repent of those sins and to confess that faith in the virgin-born Son of God, then we can be immersed in water and have the full confidence that that blood contacts us at that point, takes away every sin, and that we will continue to hide that word in our heart just as the Lord's mother did. And we can rest assured that one day God's family will be taken up to be with him forever. Don't you want that? Have you lived life long enough yet to know that this life disappoints and you can never get ahead of that game if you live according to the principles of the world? But if you live according to the principles that Mary did, as she bore the Son of God, you too can be blessed among all people. And we want that to happen for you and to all of us. And we'll stand now at this time for our encouragement. Walk with him within the narrow road. Would you have him bear your burden, carry all your load? Let him have his way with thee. His power can make you what you ought to be. His blood can cleanse your heart and make you free. His love can fill. Sister Kelly Lindsay has come saying that she's not living the way God wants her to live. And she also says she knows what she needs to do. And so we need to pray as this family. We need to come and pray for her now and daily, giving her the strength to make those changes in her life. Let's go to God in prayer. Our gracious Lord, we, we come to you holding up Kelly before you and asking you to look down upon her and, and give her the strength to carry through what she realizes we, that she needs to do. And we, we pray for her. We pray for her strength. We pray for her resolve to, to, to make those changes in her life that would be much, much more pleasing to you. Father, as, as her family, we come before you asking you to look down upon her, forgive her as she has asked for your forgiveness, our forgiveness. We forgive and we know you will forgive. Be with her, Father, and and, and help her carry through what she has determined to do. Be with her and be with us. Help us be the examples. Help us be truly her family to help her through this time in her life. And we ask these things in Jesus' holy name. Amen. There are several on our prayer list. There are those that are not on our prayer list that 
we need to pray for. We ask that each of you pray daily, reach out, touch, and help any way you can. I want to add, add one to our prayer list that we've been made aware of. <clears throat> Leslie Torkelson's sister, Denise Foss, has a granddaughter named Jaden Elizabeth Dalton Pearson. Jaden is, is suffering with, with, serious, with serious situations in her life, and, and she needs our prayers. And she needs us to, to go to the Lord to help her through this situ, through these situations. So we need to we we need to ask answer to add Jason Elizabeth Dalton Pearson to our prayer list all week daily. Let's pray together. Our gracious Lord, we come thanking you for the way you've blessed us. We come thanking you for Jesus, and we come bringing glory and honor and praise to your name. And Father, we pray, Father, we pray for all of those that are suffering different ways, Father. We, we pray for those that are, are dealing with emotional issues, with spiritual issues. We pray for those dealing with, with physical, medical issues, Father, and we we pray for them. We pray that you'll look down upon them and heal them. Be with them. Be with their families and be with those caring for them and working with them. And Father, we ask you to, to be with this congregation of your church. Father, we pray that, that we will continue to be a loving family of your children that, that support and help each other. Father, we, we ask you to look down upon all of those leaders in this, in this world, in this country. We ask that everything they do, the decisions they make, will be influenced by your truth. And Lord, we, we pray for those that, that are working against your will on this in this world, Father, we ask you to look down upon them and, and open their hearts and their minds to your truth, that they can repent and recognize your truth. Father, we, we, pray, for, we pray for all, for all those that, that follow you in this world. And we pray for their strength and their perseverance. And Father, we pray for those who, who sin. That's each of us, Lord. We recognize our weaknesses and we, we pray you will help us each day be more pleasing to you. Again, Father, we, we pray for Kelly and her continued strength and desire to be more pleasing to you. Go with us and guide us. Help each of us be better and help each of us help each other be better. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Matt, for reminding us of the example that Mary, the mother of Jesus, left for us. We appreciate that. We'll have one more song and be dismissed. We'll sing Anywhere with Jesus as we close our worship. And after we sing the song, I'd ask that you remain seated for just one minute. Brother Jeremy has a quick announcement. Let's sing. Anywhere with Jesus I can say. Anyway.
I know we did a Lads to Leaders recognition a few weeks ago, but there is one individual that could not be here that morning that I would uh, that deserves special recognition, and I would like Owen Massey to come up front real quick, please. Um, sometimes Owen's not here on Sunday mornings, and the re reason, most of the time, the reason for that is he's down in Smyrna at the Central Congregation, uh, helping them uh, lead singing uh, for their worship service, because uh, there was a need there that was uh, brought to our attention a few months ago, and uh, due to Owen's uh, many years, which he's wrapping up 13 years of participating in Lads to Leaders, that has helped him uh, to learn to be able to serve in that capacity. And so we're very thankful for him for serving here at our congregation and also for uh, going down to Smyrna once a month to um, serve as their song leader. And um, we, I'm just super proud of him for that and thankful for him for, for, doing, for being willing to do that. And that's the beauty of uh, the Lads to Leaders program is it helps to teach our young people how to serve. Um, and we're just uh, super proud of you and thankful for all you do for our congregation as and as uh, well as for Central and who knows how many other congregations you're going to serve over the years and we look forward to uh, Owen as you wrap up your last few days of high school where the next chapter of life takes you and um, looking forward to, to seeing you do great things because we know you will but the, we've made a plaque for you or we had someone make a plaque for you I didn't do it. <laughs> it says uh, Woodstock Church of Christ Outstanding Achievement Award presented to Owen Massey in appreciation of your years of dedicated service and outstanding accomplishments in the last leaders program 2009 to 2021. 